Hello, everybody, and welcome to Christian Life Church's Good Friday service. We are uh, going online today for our Good Friday service, and it's something really different, kind of cool, and that is that there are a few different churches that have come together to put together a Good Friday service, and then um, it's going to be shown uh, all over the place and different churches, different communities, uh, so they can all have a very special Good Friday experience. And so welcome to ours, and we're glad you came. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And as we are mindful today of the sacrifice that Christ made for us, as we remember all they did it for us on Good Friday. I ask your blessing upon every person that's watching here. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Good Friday to worship together. We're so excited. Yeah, we're so glad that we have the opportunity to join with churches across our district to put together a service uh, where we uh, just sit in the moment of Good Friday. We celebrate together. We come together as one church, and uh, we're going to just go through who's with us this morning, and we want to say hi to all of them. Yes, we welcome you, the churches from Winnipeg that are joining us, Praise and Worship Church, Converge Community Church, Christian Life Church, My Church Winnipeg, New Beginnings Church, Tabernacle of the New Covenant, Soul Sanctuary, Grace Community, and International Worship Center. Yeah, and from outside of the city, we have Bethel Selkirk. We have Glad Tidings Church in Red Lake, Ontario. Full Gospel Assembly in Atacokan, Ontario. And Evangel Church in Thunder Bay. That is so exciting. So welcome to each one of you. You're, we're so glad that you've joined us. And later on in the service, we're going to be doing communion together. So just whatever you have that can represent the juice and represent uh, the cracker, you just grab whatever you have to join us a little bit later. Yeah, we're going to have a great conversation with pastors from the district later on. But this morning, we want to start with worship. And so we have Todd Poirier from My Church Winnipeg, who put together a team from a number of different churches, and they're going to lead us in worship. So, Todd, thank you so much. Let's worship the Lord together this morning. For the cross that you have carried Thank you for your blood that was shed You took the weight of sin upon your shoulders Sacrificed your life so I could live that you have carried thank you for your blood that was shed you took the weight of sin upon your shoulders sacrifice your life so i could Thank you for the power of your name. 
his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah Excerpts from, taken from Mark 14 and 15. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. 
Abba, Father, he cried out. Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. When he returned to them the third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. The soldiers took Jesus in the courtyard of the governor's headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him with wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced the charge against him. It read, the king of the Jews. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he died, he exclaimed, this man truly is the son of God. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. We're so glad to be with you here on Good Friday, and I am pleased to have a uh, pastors from three different churches joining us this morning. We've got Tim Crooks from My Church Winnipeg, Jerry Michelski from Soul Sanctuary, and Pastor Bruce Martin from here at Calvary Temple. So thanks guys for joining uh, with us this morning as we go out across the district. And this morning we want to have a little conversation about what Good Friday is all about. And uh, so we thought we'd start this morning by asking, why is today called Good Friday? Jerry, why don't you start us off here? <laughs> well, I think it's called Good Friday simply because Christians believe that there's something good about it. Yeah. You know, it's very simple, very, very basic. It's the anniversary of Jesus' sufferings and the, the dying for our sins. And uh, that terrible Friday has been called good uh, because it led to the resurrection of Jesus, right? right. Um, and his victory over death, his victory yeah. over sin, and the that's the celebration of, of Easter. That's the what I would call the pinnacle of the Christian 
celebration. But your church actually doesn't call it Good Friday. (laughs) Well, no, we don't actually. We call it Bad Friday. Um, Historically, Good Friday has not always had that label. And so if you were to do your research, you'd see that good used to mean holy. So uh, for some churches, it was Holy Friday. Uh, That changed to Sacred Friday. Uh, It's also called Passion Friday. In Russia, they still call it Passion Friday. So there was always a number of different names for it. For us, um, because when you look at every character uh, in the Passion story, in the Easter story, on that Friday, um, nobody saw anything good. The Germans called it Sorrowful Friday. And so what we have done in our church is we have taken that translation, flipped it for our culture, and we call it Bad Friday. Why? Because nobody saw anything good that day. Although it's great. Yeah. yeah. But at that moment, nobody saw anything good. That's why we call it Bad Friday. Yeah, we, we get the, the blessing of hindsight. Right. Yeah. They didn't have that on that Friday, Not which is all. what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, Tim, what happened on Good Friday? Like, you know, I, I'm not from church. I don't, you know, know what this is all about. Tell us what Good Friday actually is, you know, a little more detail there. Okay. This is where, as Christians, we remember what took place um, with Jesus' betrayal, his uh, trial, his execution, and what happened after. That's what we celebrate. That's what we focus in on. Yeah. And, and Jerry, you're, you're a detail guy. Yeah. I love it. What, can, can you tell it, like, you know, a little step-by-step, step, like what actually happened? Well, I think what happens when we read our Bible, we just, we, we lose sense of time. And, and so, uh, I get, even for my community, I sat down and I, I thought, okay, let's, what's the approximate timeline? What does it look like? And so roughly Jesus uh, they, they, and the disciples leave the upper room. They, they go out and he goes to prayer and it's late at night. And so we can assume, and, and again, this is not written in stone, but we can assume that around one o'clock, uh, that's when he's in the garden. That's when Jesus is praying, you know, take this cup away from me. Yeah. By 1.30, he's, again, approximately, yeah. he's, he's betrayed. Um, Judas shows up, he's betrayed, he's arrested. By two o'clock, there's this first trial that occurs. And again, as you read through John, it comes there. It's an irregular trial. It's not normal. It's unauthorized. It's at the ex-high priest, Annas House. Um, by uh, two o'clock, so that was two o'clock. By three o'clock, a second trial occurs. They move from Annas' house to Caiaphas, who is the high priest. Annas is his father-in-law. You know, it's this kind of twisted stuff going on here. Um, by uh, um, there, and in that point, that's where Jesus is spot, spat on. He's mocked at that place. By six o'clock, they move to uh, the Sanhedrin, which is the governing Jewish body at the time. By 6.30, they move him to the first trial in front of Pilate. So what you see is this moving happening all the time. Uh, Pilate at that point says, look it, I find no guilt in this man. So they take him, they, by 7, they take him before Herod. And of course, Herod mocks him and they put a robe on. And it's just a, a nightmare. By 7.30, he's back before Pilate. And uh, Pilate wants to let him go. But people are demanding his crucifixion. Uh, by 8 o'clock, Jesus is scourged. You know, the whipping that, that takes place. And then by nine, he's forced to carry his cross. By approximately noon, he's on the cross. And then he's dead by three. And that's the key point. We know by three o'clock. Yeah. Because that's the it is finished yeah. declaration at the same yeah. time the shofar was blown yeah. by the high priest finishing Passover. Yeah. So we know three o'clock. Yeah. That's the, the absolute, we know that's there. <laughs> Can you imagine our Canadian justice system? holding two trials and, and getting that all done overnight. Same day, <laughs> same day, to, yeah. same day service. And, and I mean, what a, a great thing to understand, sort of the details. Incredible. But Pastor Bruce, I know for you, Easter holds such significance. We talk mm. about it a lot here. For you, there's a real personal mm. connection to Easter. Tell us about what Good Friday means for you. I am so thankful, Jerry, for what you shared with us and uh, both of you because... It is so important that we know this is historically and geographically real. And based on that, if God went to all the trouble to make all this happen, we need to ask why. And so I was just thinking this morning about this passage in Romans 5. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time 
<laughs> and died for yeah. us yeah. sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, mm -hmm. though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God, <laughs> in his great love for us, he mm -hmm. sent Christ to die while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right, this is the point. When something happened in the heavenlies, when Jesus said it is finished, as you referred to, Tim, since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. So God found a way, certainly rooted in the, in the Old Testament, in the sacrificial system, God found a way to fulfill what they were looking forward to through all of those sacrifices of Leviticus. And then Jesus died and he, Christ, who knew no sin, became sin so that he could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the righteous became sinful, so we the sinful could become in right standing. And I just, I just, oh Lord, help us to never lose sight of the fact that Jesus had to die for every one of us. And you just explained the theory of substitution beautifully. <laughs> Substitutionary death, yes. right? Oh, yes. Okay, hold uh, on. That's a big word. Well, it's a theological term. <laughs> it's a theological term. <laughs> yeah. but, let let but the like, doctor explain. Tell no, no, me no, no. why, like, <laughs> why did Jesus have to die? Well, all people are in need of a substitute since all are guilty of sinning against the holy God. Okay, so scripture says all have sinned. Yeah. Very clear. Yeah. That's uh, the we're not born good. No. Right? Which could get me in trouble by saying that, but I don't care because I'm looking at scripture and scripture is very clear. We've all sinned. And all sin deserves punishment because sin is a personal, what do you say, a personal affront? Yeah, a, re a personal rebellion against God Himself. Yep. Right? So uh, animal sacrifices, you made mention, they 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 took the guilt off God's people in the old testament. Um, but these full sacrifices couldn't fully atone for the sins of mankind. Yeah. And uh, for that, Jesus comes in and died and mm -hmm. takes the place, right? Perfect. That, that's the substitution. Takes, him, takes on himself the, the full punishment. Right? Yeah. That picture right there starts in the garden. Yeah. When after Adam and Eve had sinned, what does God do? God actually gives them clothing of animal skin. Right there you get the picture. There's a shedding of blood yep. to provide covering to cover humanity's sin. Starts there in the garden. Yeah. But like, isn't there another way? Like even Jesus in, in, the, in the garden asks like, Lord, if it's possible, remove this cup from me. Like, yeah. why Jesus? What, like, why did Jesus have to do that for us? It, uh. <laughs> well, he was a sinless lamb of God. He's one, as Jerry referred to, no sin. He had not sinned. So he was the only one that's spotless. Again, we're into the Old Testament yeah. imagery and pictures of the sacrificial system, that spotless lamb that was presented and through, through sacrifice, through the shedding of blood, provided that covering for yeah. sin. So Jesus, the one who was like that lamb, no sin on his, like he was the one who yeah. gave of himself and died through his blood, there's a covering, not only a covering, there's a cleansing once and for all of sin. Yeah. Through what Jesus did. Second Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Yes. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. That's it. Yeah. And, th and this leads us to our next question of what happened through Jesus' death. And we have some real imagery, punishment, forgiveness of a veil being torn. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. About the veil? Yeah. Oh my goodness, absolutely beautiful. You're into Old Testament um, understanding of the sacrificial system. And it was the Holy of Holies, this massive veil that separated everyone else from the presence of God. And only the great high priest was able to go in once a year. And the account that's given, you'll see in the historical record, I know Jerry referred to it there, um, that the veil was ripped in two from the top to the bottom. So incredible. This same word ripped in two, is the same word that's used at the baptism of Jesus Christ. 
where it talks about, and, uh, and the heavens were ripped open and Holy Spirit descends like a dove upon Jesus Christ. That whole idea of the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit as well, God took away every obstacle so humanity could live the way we were designed to in his presence, in relationship with him. Okay, so we have this great imagery, but mm -hmm. like, what's that mean to the average person? Like, what's that mean to the person sitting at home right now watching this go, okay, great, that's a great story. Mm -hmm. That's a great image. How do I apply that to my life? I think, I think the issue is perception. I think sometimes our perception of God is that, is that he's so different. And then what Tim just expri expresses, no, no, he's, he's broken all barriers for yeah. intimacy. Absolutely. So any barriers that were already established historically um, are now broken spiritually. Yeah. And, and it opens the door for an intimate and personal relationship. And so that's why, you know, we say, you know, our, our relationship with God is intimate and person, personal. It's not about these works. It's about having this time of communion with God. Yeah. And there's no barriers anymore. And I don't need to do this. I don't need to pay penance. I don't need to. There's no rituals. Right. There's no rituals. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, Jared, is, is uh, the whole thing that we talk about relationship. And notice that the veil was ripped from top That's to it. bottom rather than trying to rip it from bottom up with religion and effort mm -hmm. and a struggle. And so I love to share with people that we get to enter into the presence of God and the presence of God gets to enter into us. Yeah. And we get to live in the reality of Christ in me yeah. through the Holy Spirit, of course. Christ in me, my hope of glory. And so we get a down payment of heaven to live in us now until we're reunited with him. So the significance of what you both talked about of the veil being ripped from the top down. Mm -hmm. It wasn't man-made. It wasn't yeah. ripped from the bottom up. It was ripped from the top down. Ephesians 4, or Ephesians 2.14 says, For he himself was our peace, which is Jesus, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Yeah. So there, there's, there's no hostility between us and God because of what Jesus did and the work yeah. he's accomplished through the cross. So Good Friday, significant. Yes. Yeah. Tim, what, what does it mean for you? Like when you personally think about Good Friday, mm. what, what's on your heart? What do you want to share with us that, that really impacts you? Incredible gratitude. Incredible gratitude. Looking at uh, being an immigrant to the country, looking at my family history, what Jesus Christ set us free from, what Jesus Christ changed in us when we allowed his forgiveness to be applied to our account, to our lives. Just the transition started with my father, my mother, then me, and just the change. So the significance for me on Good Friday is remembering what Jesus has done and the difference he's made in my life and the difference he continues to make each and every day. Praise God. Jerry, what about for you? You've been doing this a long time. You're a pastor. Like, what... What is Good Friday? Like, what, what is stirs... Bad Friday? <laughs> right, but what stirs up in your heart? Well, for Bad Friday, um, uh, yeah, again, I would say the last six, 16 years of our church, uh, we've used an order of worship for Bad Friday. It's called the Tenembrae. And the Tenembrae is Latin for service of the shadows. So you see how this works out for us. And so it's a series of candles that are lit. And what we do is we do, we do the scripture readings. We do the timeline. And uh, the entire gathering is focused on that. And we, what we do is we invite people to come and to experience it. And yeah, we're a Pentecostal in, in our theology, but we're not a happy, clappy church on Good Friday. You know what I'm saying? I've had people come in and go, wow, this is depressing. Yes, yes, it should move you. Yeah. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at people to understand uh, what Jesus did for us. And it should move us and it should move us to tears. And so we look to that experience as a reminder. And we're so grateful for Easter Sunday. Yeah. But at that moment, on that day, nobody saw anything good. Mm -hmm. And so we reflect on that. Yeah, the, the, the thought that the disciples, the people that walked with Jesus every day, yeah. like what they felt mm. on that Friday. They ran away. Mm. Right? Yeah, and, and, and that, that is a, a significant thing to give people time and space, like you're saying, to sit in the moment. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I think 
I think it's just the, the sacredness of the moment is, is the beauty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor Bruce, love for you to share uh, about what it is personally, but I know you won't want to leave this stage without walking people through an opportunity of how they can connect the dots and have a relationship wonderful. with Jesus. Wonderful. Let me just say how, how wonderful it is to have the two of you with us today on Good Friday. I'm just so thankful that we can embrace one another yeah. and um, we all work for the same coach and uh, I'm just so glad we're, we're here together today. And, and I just want to say, Jared, that for me, it's the words, it is finished. Yeah. We don't have to try and become good enough. Mm. Jesus paid it all. So if you're watching today and you've always believed, in fact, maybe you are watching because it is Good Friday and, and you know what that's about. And you know Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world. But let me tell you, he paid for your sins and my sins. And each of us must take that universal truth and make it our own. For as much as we believed and accepted him and received him, and I just want you to make it personal today. Sorry for my sin. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Please come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Pray it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I so appreciate this time that we've had to have this conversation and, and bring insight to what Good Friday is all about or Bad Friday, <laughs> depending on your roots. And, and what a wonderful thing that we can talk about that and gain a deeper sense. I, I've, I've grown up in the church. I never knew the history. So thanks for sharing that with us. And, and this morning, as we continue to worship and Jesus paid it all, we're going to prepare our hearts for communion that we're going to partake in together after we do that. So let's worship the Lord together and make sure you have those emblems ready to go for after Jesus paid it all.
What a beautiful truth. Jesus did something on the cross for each one of us. It's a beautiful way to, it's a wonderful word picture. He paid it all. And um, we're going to commemorate that. In fact, Jesus said, when you get together, do this in remembrance of me. And what a privilege for me to be sharing in communion. Uh, we're representing a, a whole bunch of churches in our district fellowship. And uh, we are symbolically going to wrap our arms around them. We're going to bring them up to the table. And we're going to say, we are not divided. We are connected in Jesus. So Jerry, I want you to take the bread and lead us as a fellowship, wherever we are in all the different communities of faith. And, um, and those who are visiting with us, lead us in what the bread means and we'll all participate with you. Well, uh, I invite you all to take your emblems with you. And, and, and the beauty of this is maybe you're at home and there's, you're a family unit. So uh, we're not going to share, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, COVID restrictions. But, yeah. but I want to invite you at home. And so, First Corinthians, Paul writes to the church. He says, "I received from the Lord, which I also pass on to you. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, He took the bread, and uh, when He had given thanks, He broke it. Yeah. And He said, "This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me." And he passed it out. So maybe at home you'd like to pass that broken bread to your family members that you're with. And the rest of us, let us participate. And let us partake together in remembrance until he comes again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Broken body. Thank you, Jesus. Tim? Lead us with the cup. Yeah. Um, also, the Apostle Paul said this, that this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink this cup in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's remember the price that Jesus Christ paid in his blood for the forgiveness of our sin. Let's partake together. Thank you, yes. Jesus. The price you pay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Jared. We appreciate you helping us today. God bless you. We're going to continue to worship the Lord as we bring this service to a close. We just want to thank you, everyone again for being a part of this. And let's continue to worship now.
thank you so much for tuning in today. And we just, as a church, want to say thank you to all the other churches that contributed to help make this service happen today, especially to Calvary Temple for hosting and for producing most of the service. We are also so thankful that you chose to click on this video today, wherever you're watching this from, whenever you're watching it, we're so glad that you made the decision to click on this video and to see what was happening here in Manitoba for Good Friday. If this service resonated with you or if it got you asking questions about who Jesus is and more about what Good Friday is all about, we would love to start a conversation with you. You can find everything you need to know at our website, clcwinnipeg.ca. And as well, I wanna invite you to Easter. It's happening on Sunday. We're gonna have an online service at 11 a.m. that's gonna be posted on our Facebook and our YouTube page, as well as an in-person service at 1042 Jefferson Avenue in Winnipeg. We're gonna have two services at 9.30 a.m. That's our traditional service, and at 11.10 a.m. That's our uh, more contemporary service. So we would love to see you there, but if you can't join us in person, there's always our online service, and we love seeing new people joining us there as well. I hope that this service has been an encouragement to you. I hope that it has been a chance to reflect and to think about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And as we now await Easter Sunday, I just wanna say God bless you and thank you so much for joining us today.